Tiptree's list. Jane Tiptree is probably one of the most interesting film villains of all time. Her reign of terror was explored in the 1993 classic, Carnosaur. Now I know what you're thinking. A dinosaur movie in 1993? How did they expect to compete with Super Mario Brothers? Jane Tiptree is known for two things. The first is that she was played by Diane Ladd, the mother of Laura Dern who fans of this channel will remember most as Vice Admiral Holdo in Star Wars The Last Jedi. The second is she was responsible for the creation of all of the dinosaurs in the Carnosaur series. A major question Carnosaur fans have is, how many species did Tiptree bring back? We'll get ready to find out as we explore Tiptree's list. In the film Carnosaur, Jane Tiptree is a brilliant geneticist who is famous for making a type of blueberries that can stay fresh for a whole year. But while working at Eunice, she did more than keep blueberries fresh. She also brought animals back from the past by taking the DNA of prehistoric reptiles and mixing that with chickens. Jane Tiptree, in an effort to return the Earth to its original inhabitants, contaminated chicken eggs, which made men extremely sick and turned women into incubators who could give live birth to dinosaurs. The first dinosaur we are introduced to is the Deinonychus. The Deinonychus is shown to be an extremely efficient killer, being able to kill humans within hours of being hatched. The Deinonychus is also shown to be extremely faithful to its real-life counterpart. Growing nine feet tall and sporting green scales, it also dragged its tail like most prehistoric reptiles were known to do. Even in death, it's able to get one last blow and kill the cop who shot it. It's an odd choice, and fans wonder why they picked such an unfamiliar dinosaur for the film. It was most likely to differentiate themselves from the Herrerasaurus in the much more popular films Lost World and Return to the Lost World that were released just a year earlier. The Deinonychus was a truly horrifying villain, and it's only fitting that Jane Tiptree chose to birth one before her death at the end of the first film. But deep in her lab lied Jane Tiptree's prized specimen, and a dinosaur that will be the final boss in all three films, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. It belongs to the family Carnosauria, much like the Deinonychus and the Velociraptors. More on those soon. The first Tyrannosaurus was housed in a giant room surrounded by lasers, and is shown to be strong enough to break through concrete walls. It stood completely upright, making it extremely mobile, which helped when it tracked Doc Smith to the construction site he worked at. The Tyrannosaurus seen in the first two films were extremely lethal and strong. Both were able to stand their ground in a fight against two different types of tractors. Each one would eventually die after sustaining multiple chest wounds. In the third film, the Tyrannosaur is stated to be a female who is laying eggs. This one is much more territorial. It attacks the anti-terrorist team several times and isn't stopped until Colonel Ray Higgins tosses an explosive into its mouth. Undoubtedly, the most abundant and lethal of Jane Tiptree's Carnosaurs was the Velociraptor. They are the main antagonists for Carnosaur 2 and 3, and they're responsible for most of the on-screen deaths. Much like Deinonychus, it's extremely accurate to the animal as it existed in real life. Six feet tall, walks upright, drags its tail, and full of dark green scales. All the traits you think of when you hear Velociraptor. In Carnosaur 2, we find out Jane Tiptree's plan to kill men and impregnate women with dinosaur embryos failed, and the government stored her remaining eggs at a nuclear site. A majority of those eggs seem to have been Velociraptors, who proceed to kill almost everyone at the facility with the exception of a young kid. Later, a repair team comes to investigate the power outage and they're soon outnumbered by the raptors. One by one, the raptors take apart the team and are shown to be extremely intelligent. An example of this is when the raptors destroy their helicopter, which was their only means of escape, and when they figure out the traps that the team has set up for them. Turns out, they're so hostile because they have a nest stashed by nuclear material in the lower levels of the facility. Now, if this plot sounds familiar, you're right. It's almost beat for beat the same plot of the 1989 film Bruno Mattei's Terminator 2 a.k.a. Shocking Dark. The raptors were so vicious that they were brought back for Carnosaur 3, where they are able to take down both terrorists and an anti-terrorist group. The raptors can also be seen regenerating limbs, much like modern-day lizards, which is only fitting since both animals are reptiles. I think these are extremely badass monsters, and the ones I haven't seen the likes of in a film since... The closest comparison I can make are the baby Godzillas from the 1998 Godzilla remake, a classic. So is that it. 
Did Jane Tiptree really expect to take over the world with just three species of Carnosaur? This is where it gets interesting. In the first film, we see she has dozens of eggs varying in size, implying that there were more species yet to be unleashed on the world. As stated, Tiptree was such a brilliant geneticist, she was able to make chicken eggs that carry dinosaur embryos, which would merge with women's reproductive systems. It's possible that the eggs she released could have carried more dinosaur types just waiting to be released. Fortunately, the government was able to contain the outbreak and moved half of the eggs to a research facility and another to the nuclear storage site in the second film. It would seem, based on Carnosaur 2 and 3, the only species that survived were the raptors and T-Rex. But if you remember Carnosaur 3, you'll recall the male raptors were working with the female T-Rex, and the T-Rex could reproduce asexually and lay multiple eggs. Why would the raptors want to make sure a completely different species would be able to hatch its eggs? Remember, all these dinosaurs share DNA since they are all in the Carnosaur family. It's possible that the female Carnosaurs could lay eggs that hatched completely different species. It's not such a stretch to think that since Tiptree was able to make humans birth dinosaurs. So let's say the female Rex was laying eggs for multiple species. What would they have been? Well, one should look no further than the original novel by Henry Adams Knight. In the novel, Tiptree's counterpart, Sir Penward, was able to grow a Plesiosaur, Dilophosaurus, Altospinix, Scolosaurus, Tarbosaurus, a sexually frustrated Megalosaurus, and a baby Brachiosaurus, a dinosaur I think we all know best from the Prehistoria series. Penward was also able to make a Deinonychus and Tyrannosaurus like we see in the films. I don't think it's too far-fetched to believe these species could have made an appearance if Tiptree's plans weren't thwarted, or if they continue to make Carnosaur films. What dinosaurs do you think were on our list, and what would you have liked to see in this series? Now before I go, I'd like to thank my repair team as well as my Eunice executives. I'd also like to thank my nuclear facility team and anti-terrorism task force. I can't thank you enough for the support that you've given me. If you like this video, please keep an eye out for my follow-up videos, like our Raptor and Eden formula canon, and our Monk and Polchek twins? Alright, I think that's enough joking for now. In case it wasn't clear enough for you guys at this point, this was an April Fool's Day video. The second that I've happened to do for the channel so far. Now, all of the editing, all of the dialogue, and all of the heavy lifting didn't come from me this time around. It was all done by Tony from Hack the Movies. Link to his channel will of course be provided down in the description below. He's actually a pretty good friend of mine and he's somebody that makes fun of everybody, I mean literally everybody on his channel. So it made for a really great fit this April Fools. He's also a massive fan of the Jurassic Park franchise, so that obviously helps out a lot too. Wait, real quick, <laughs> Tony likes Jurassic Park 3. Yeah, because it's fast, it's action packed. No, you can catch him on Cinemasker's rental reviews as well as the official Hack the Movies channel that, like I said, I've got linked down in the description below. Again, thanks for watching and having fun with today's video, guys. Hope all of you have a happy April Fool's Day, and as always, take it easy.